Hello friends! Today we have another fun story. This time we found some really interesting malware. We've been monitoring it for a while. We haven't been able to figure out what the heck it was doing until some recent updates have happened and it's kind of really interesting. It's kind of delivering malware payloads via Google Calendar invites. It's kind of crazy. So let's just get into it. This is the package name here. We discovered this on NPM. OS Info Checker ES6. Now, it, like, the latest version is five days ago. We first kind of noticed it on this version, which was published two months ago. And I'll go on kind of what we what we first saw and how we uncovered this. So in this here, the pre-installed.js, immediately there's a couple of red flags. We're using this eval function here, that ATOB, which is basically decoding a base64 string. And this is very likely dodgy, right? Eval means we're going to decode this and immediately run it in our project. And it's it's just how malware is often delivered, but we couldn't quite get this all to work. And what we're seeing here is in this decoded string, we're seeing this kind of random character, but actually there's a lot hidden behind the scenes in this. And this is where you can kind of really get into trouble by looking at code, just in places like the npm viewer if we actually unpack this in a, in a different way so here i have a, a hex viewer this is the code that we have next to all the hex information and you'll notice all of these strings now and that doesn't appear in here so what the heck are they and what are they doing well they're not dots what they actually are these here are unicode private use access characters and basically so these are unassigned unicode characters that people can define define symbols for themselves and use that in their private code that's kind of what's going on here and this is kind of especially a dodgy so what we decided to do is look a little bit deeper and look at you know what this actually does and so we managed to get the application to save this code in a run.txt text file and here we were really expecting something awfully spicy, right? As I'm sure a lot of you are. But you're going to be very disappointed because this is actually <laughs> one of those characters we're hiding. Which is tremendously disappointing because it's a very sophisticated way of hiding kind of like this code in here. Or to do a console log and a check, like what's going on in here. So we couldn't actually uncover what was happening until we noticed that this new version had arrived. So here if we look in, in this, we see this latest version published five days ago. And if we actually look in this, there's a couple of changes. This eval is kind of commented out, but this is still here. So let's have a look at what's actually happening in this case. So we're gonna copy this back across into our hex viewer, which when we look at the new version of this, we can actually see that there's a whole lot more of these characters, right? I'm, I'm really loving this way of obfuscation. If we compare the two side by side, like look at how innocent this all looks and then look at how much data is actually hidden, like hidden behind that. And you can copy this code across and look at it to yourself. Incredibly interesting. Really, really fantastic work from the attack. So I never like to give attackers too much props, but I mean, this, this is cool, right? This is cool. So what the heck is actually going on here? Well, as you notice, it's gotten a lot bigger. So the, the exploit has actually gotten a whole lot more sophisticated. So this one is really interesting. So let's take a look at unpack this and we can use the same method to uncover the code. Now, here is what's being hidden by those characters. And we've beautified it a little bit. We've added some comments into it so that we can share this. But there's kind of a lot going on in here. But the part that's kind of really interesting for me is this here. This here is covered up in base64. So if we unbase64 this, I'm just using just a normal yeah online thing. We get a calendar invite. And if we go to that calendar invite, what do we get? We get more base64. And if we take this base64 and revert it, then we get another domain. So there's, they're using Google calendar invites encoded in base64 to deliver encoded base64 strings, which are domains. Like this is the level of obfuscation and hiding that's going on to this is, is like remarkable. It's it's incredible, like this, the, the layers that you have to kind of peel back to understand what's going on. So what do we know is actually happening here? Well, we know there's a lot of dodgy things going on. And we know that this domain that ultimately is being encoded in this Google invite is actually the kind of the official payload delivery. All what's going on in the, in the code leading up to that and, and what we can see here, this is kind of preparing everything for it. So obviously the next step is to look at that domain and actually try and uncover what's happening. Now, unfortunately, we haven't been able to get a payload response from that. That's probably because the attackers are still setting this up. They planted the seed of this a long time ago and like two months ago. Now they've updated a new version and they're starting to get ready. So they're going to unleash something. How do we know this? Well, we could, there's a couple of other really scary things that have, that have happened. 
This project has four dependents. These are projects that rely on this. A lot of these are from the same author. And when we look at these, these look professional. They've got readmes, they have a clear instruction of what they're doing. These packages will probably do something. However, their main purpose is just to deliver the malware from the other package, right? And if we take a look at all of them, they're all kind of like professional. They don't have a lot of weekly downloads yet, but this is the idea behind the supply chain attack. That's something that's scary. And these dependents are kind of new. So you can see how the stage is being set up. This malicious package was kind of made malicious a while ago. They've just updated that to include more obfuscated code because they've proven, they tested out their theory that it will work. Now they're hiding the real payload in Google Calendar invites. Right now that payload from the Google Calendar invite does nothing, right? There's nothing there. That is because they're not ready to launch the attack. They're probably going to spend a lot of time promoting these other projects here, right? They're going to try and get like a, in, probably embedded into more of the supply chain, the ecosystem, and then they're going to launch it. Unfortunately for them, we did find out what they were doing. I don't know what their end goal was. It's probably to do with crypto or something dodgy or stealing passwords, but I do know they're up to no good. And I do know Wisconsin report this. <laughs> So I'm sorry if you're watching it and I ruined your supply chain attack. I gotta say, I loved it. It was incredibly well hidden from undefined asset characters hidden in the code to Google invites and basic, which are delivering base 64 payloads. I mean, it's just, it's top notch. Not quite good enough, but you're getting there. You're getting there. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I loved making this. I loved looking into this. It's still live now, so we'll keep checking to see if anything happens. But by the time you're probably watching this, it's probably it's probably been shut down. But it was fun. It was a fun one.